Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> it is 311 at 707. I was really, I wasn't trying to do that, but I did that. So it's a numerologically significant night. Um, I think the title of this video is slightly misleading. I'm not going to lie to you. I spent approximately six minutes arguing with StreamYard about what the title of the show could be because I didn't understand what symbol or what font or I said something in the title that it didn't like and it just kept saying like yeah that's not okay and I was like what is it can I not say the number 11 is it of like had a moment anyway somewhat figured it out I guess so I don't know what the title of this video is I don't know what actually ended up happening so you're here that's all that matters so tonight's going to be a little different, guys. I know that many people join in and they're always looking forward to free mini readings and psychic readings and divination readings. And I really appreciate that. And I am going to be starting after St. Patrick's Day doing them pretty much every evening uh, at the same time so that we can be consistent and that you guys can join me in that process. But Something that we do for the Gypsy Tribe, something that if you've been joining me for the last four months, I've been doing with my very dear friend, Kenna, is um, on the 11th, we do a crystal sale. But uh, right now is March. It's spring. It's a really busy time. She's a mom and businesswoman as well. And it's just really overwhelming after uh, our recent event. And she is prepping for the upcoming event in Savannah this September. So the countdown is on, the pandemic things are lifting and stuff is shifting around and she is preparing for that event and trying to get all of the crystals that you guys want to see set out in a space that's going to work for a little bit bigger of a show than I think we've done in the past. Um, so while she preps for that, I still want to utilize this space because it's always been that day, that special time of the month that I take time out to share with you some of the things that I have on spiritual sale, right? Um, on Paranormal Sarah, I've always shared with you the different <clears throat> stones, rocks, altar items, and different things that I work with, spells and charms. And so I'm going to take tonight's opportunity, as I've shared this week with you guys, to um, highlight some of the necklaces and pieces that will be going up on my website. My website's being revamped right now. And so for my inventory, I'm going to have kind of a whole new area where there's been a lot of interest in personal decoration because of the not just the cosplay, but the spiritual significance of decorating yourself. So whether it's temporary tattoos or golden metallic henna or scrying eyeliner, things that you do to spiritually kind of pierce the veil and allow yourself to be seen and also be protected. Um, I think that the materials that you wear on your body are a lot more important than people might say or give conscious significance to. And I also think that dressing up and being a part of the garb in your spirituality is really important to the growth of your imagination and the mind and getting out of your body as well. I know some people, it's like a nudist colony and it's all about, you know, getting naked. Uh, I have kind of found in some of the spiritual growth that the equal and opposite of that energy, that what people use in their space on their bodies to decorate makeup, hair, clothes, fashion, whatever, says a lot about a person. And when you start to change those things on the outside, if you are someone who does hair and makeup and like cosmetology, it might seem like a surface thing, but it's a really important process. And you'll find while doing that process, it's a deeply intimate people talking about sharing their life you know it's just mm, it's one of those things that i i find every area of how a person chooses to interact with their outside like the gym and the gym community going and becoming a gym rat and you know i'll spot you and having a spotter and like these little spaces they're really significant hey david hello meta um <laughs> I am absolutely so excited to see you guys growing uh, with me and joining me. Um, yay! Yes, you need to get a St. Patrick's reading. And don't forget when my website launches, which is next week, um, that I will be sharing some of my newsletter coupons. I will be sending out all sorts of things for you guys to have and use. So if you follow me on social media, you'll be able to get some coupon codes to share on all of my readings, crystals, altar items, jewelry, and events retreats ah, we're coming we're it's alive it's alive anyway 
I wanted to give you guys first dibs. So firstly, um, to address the questions that came through, uh, I have one from a Katie L and I, I'm going to say Iowa, but it's just, it just says I, it just says I, maybe it's Illinois, maybe it's Iowa, maybe it's, maybe it's Indiana. Um, I miss being able to do my beading. I had some gorgeous gemstones. One says Mary, Ooh, these kinds of things, guys, this is the time. Don't stop. Get it, get it right now. Pick up your beading starting tomorrow, starting this new moon tomorrow. So important. So meaningful. Um, people often ask, what are all the different things that I do? Photography, my photography studio is still going, going strong. We had a furnace fire just around Christmas time. And so I am also doing my haunted photography events uh, all throughout the paranormal nationwide uh, taking pictures of famous Paris celebrities at some of the events. You'll see me behind the camera mostly. Uh, but I am also doing photography, hopefully some boudoir sessions, some weddings as events open up. Ooh. Yes, David, all of the things, all, all the things. Speaking of things, um, I do custom spiritual items. I do them on commission. Being a jack of all trades means I'm always sharpening those tools. So before I jump into the jewelry real quick, and it will be very fast, I promise. Um, these are the kinds of wands that I've been working for the past few years. And the process, just kind of like saging, is that it's a process. It's not just going and I don't even think you could buy a stick. Maybe you could. Um, but it's usually when I'm out like on a hike, on an intentional hike, on a hike that I'm going to go. I'm going to eat. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to have lunch. I'm going to commune. I'm going to do that. And that you go, you go with your offering, you go with your heart open, you go looking for signs and, and sing with the birds and you pick up little stones and things and you find the perfect little treasures and you bring them back and you find it in a certain tree. You find out what tree it's from. You learn about it. You count its rings. You learn how old it is. It begins to have a name and an energy and suddenly it has a personality and you go, oh my gosh, I love you. And it has little eyes and it has a face and it starts to grow on you, it starts to return to life and you start to decorate it. I don't like to decorate nature too much. I find it's already quite beautiful, but I'll sand it down so that you can hold it and so that it can be child friendly. I will make it to where it's easy to hold and that it's the perfect length and that it's something that you can have. And then usually I will burn into it the initials or runes or symbols or signs or patterns that I'm feeling for the owner whenever an owner chooses that space that I want a wand made. And I say, okay, wonderful. What will it be for? And they say, I have no idea. I just want one. I like them. Or I'm, I intend to be connecting with Hades and, you know, connecting with my grandparents on the other side. And I go, ooh, okay, awesome. And you kind of go into this space where you engage. You get to have that piece and then it gets boxed and sent off. And they're very important, intimate pieces. I wouldn't say they're numbered, but uh, only a few people, only a select handful of people, you know, have my wands. But I do them on commission if you're interested they're only $99. Um, I try to do them in under 30 days. The process sometimes because I oil them and anoint them and that sort of thing. Um, just because the burning, I don't know. I've, I've, one of my dearest friends, Sandra, waited an entirely way too long for her wand. Um, so, but I do them. They're beautiful. It's just seeing what kind of wood ends up coming your way is kind of cool. Um, and then I also do a range of things for crowns and face pieces. So like I'm doing a, a very kind of basic one for myself because my dog ate my horned one that I had. So I have to kind of redo it and they start with a headband or a crown and then they grow into whatever it is that you are needing. So someone recently did one for Pan or someone wanting a Medusa where then I'm going and buying little snakes and doing snake skin and gluing the snake, real snake skin onto it with stones. And it's kind of going to be whatever your budget is. Uh, they can be as affordable as 40 bucks. And you say, I, I have 40 bucks. I want one of your crowns. I love Persephone or I have no idea whatever you feel or this is my birthday. Go for it. Or I want it to look like this one. And you send me a picture. I work with it. Um, this one is one that goes in the hair, which I love, but I, I have the headband sets too. 
And then the face masks, I've got really neat looking face masks to do initiation and rituals and things for since some things are public and require uh, face masks. So just some kind of cool spiritual things that you are going to see kind of going up on the website too. So if you guys are interested in any of those, I want to let you know first, I close those down when I have too many orders and I go, whoa, it's too much. Uh, right now I'm open because my son's birthday is this month and we are renovating our bathroom and my oven pooped. So I'm like ready to work as much as I can to uh, get back on top of things. So that's exciting. And I'm back from my spring trips and we are kind of in the school thing now. I think I've got the, I know how the pandemic has a fully affected me as a mother. I feel like I'm in it. So I feel like uh, that spring fever is hitting me. I don't know if it's hitting you, but let's get into this, shall we? Where I'm just going to basically throw out to you guys these pieces. If you want any of them, if you're interested in them, they're mainly, uh, I have one bracelet, one set of earrings, and then uh, like seven or eight necklaces. We're just going to go through them really quickly. If you're interested, if you want them, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat room and I will just go ahead and not even list it. That will help me save time and energy on the final things that I'm getting ready to do and launch. And there's Samantha and there's David. Woo! Look at there's Samantha and Mary. Okay, so you just let me know. And let me know your thoughts too, because each and every one of these um, on the website, you'll see it's kind of important that for me, necklaces or something that you're buying in a spiritual sense, they come with a spell jar. So why? And I mean, if it's if the spell jar is obviously offensive to you or you're not interested in the spell jar, tell me and we can adjust the price and I won't have to do all of the work because then you'd just be buying the necklace and I can totally just sell you a necklace. But the idea that, you guys, this is my private collection. They're not mass made. Uh, they're usually handmade or like old sentimental pieces. They have a story. They come with a story. They come with a spell. <laughs> and they're personalized from me to you. So I love that. Um, and I feel like understanding that process is important in that process. But anyway, this is my little spell jar. It kind of gives you an example. It's got some casparilla powder. We've got some rose petals from my grandpa's garden in there and then this one is for love and protection so i have some chamomile i have some lavender this could be used as an incense it could be used as a protective sand it could be used as a grit it could be used as a sachet it could be used as anything that you want or you can simply keep it unsealed on your altar as an anchor for your spell or an anchor for your charm meaning that and samantha you've missed nothing yet so don't worry um meaning that you keep this at home on your altar and it might be a spell for someone you love or something intentional that you and I discuss whenever I send out your necklace, your piece of jewelry or spiritual decor and that you go, you know what, this is for whatever. We make it personalized. We seal it, get sent off. The idea of a spell in many ways is that you do have to let it go. You have to try not to think about it. Don't think about it. It's nearly impossible manipulating the cognitive process is a part of what I do. So one of the really cool tricks that I have found is being able to not erase, but replace. So whenever you are wearing your piece of jewelry, it's the antithesis of the spell in which that you are letting out into the universe, that you anchor something to you that's going to remind you of what it is that your goal and your manifestation is. And then you have your spell jar that does completely get released. You don't have to worry about, did I do it right? You know, all of this thoughts. Every time that someone compliments or any time that you refer back to this item, it takes you to a physical space rather than a mental anchor. And it kind of solidifies your manifestations, your goals, rather than keeping you restrained to that. I have found to be a very efficient way to use spell work. <clears throat> As we often wear jewelry that makes us think of someone that we love, or we wear uh, a piece of something that empowers us, fashion or a pen or something like that. It is not dead. I think fashion and spiritual decor is reviving. And I can tell you in a forensic sense that paying attention to someone's jewelry, their hands, what they wear and how they wear it is extremely important. So, 
without further ado, um, the one piece I am wearing, um, Jennifer on YouTube, yes, this piece that I'm wearing, um, again, I hate to sell any of these because they're my personal collection. Um, but this is my first one and you can see it's kind of a longer chain. It kind of hangs in that breast space. It's meant to be um, a chakra protector. It's just basic beaten, it's just beaten metal. It's got an interesting texture to it. It's not anything flashy. It's not anything crazy, but it, it ha has a bend to it. It has kind of these hinges to it. And so this is just kind of my, so this is my number one and it's my number one necklace. So we're just going to go through these in the number. And so if you want number one, this one is only $40. It comes with a spell and it's the three triangles. So it's kind of a really about a transmutation of being able to take this this and this and we're going to do three six nine this is one of my tesla pieces so it's greatly anchored to tesla and whenever we're working with silver um, it's kind of a feminine space so it's a lunar space it's working with the moon we're talking about electricity this is something that i wear anytime that i feel like i'm in a space that is like you know too much 5g or too much conspiracy theories or too much craziness in the space and that i need to fine tune i need to be not tone deaf i need to pay attention to the harmonies to me that's always nikola tesla he's almost a musical genius of numbers and so anytime that i see anything in thirds anything that is a triangle anything that is also for me very indigenous when i wear braids in my hair people will ask me you know what types of braids if it means anything um, you know, growing up, whenever I would go to the reservation with my nanny uh, or anyone, really, uh, it would be mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit. So the three braids and connecting the upper, lower and middle earth, which is a predominant space for the religious beliefs, um, at least in the Midwest. And that's what I think when I see triangles, that's where it takes me to. And that's something that I hold very near and dear to my heart. And when I'm thinking of that solar plexus and connecting to that type of energy, that's what this necklace does for me. So that's what this necklace is about. It's my Nikola Tesla uh, lunar moon piece. It's only $40. If you or someone you know are interested, again, let me know. I'm going to keep this video up for the next week until my website launches. When my website launches, I'm gonna take this video down. If someone in the chat has not messaged me or put sold, number one, I want that Tesla necklace, give it, give it, give it, then you can still get it and you can still message me. Otherwise, it'll be on my website, which is at paranormalsarah.com. So I'm keeping this piece on. You see me wear this a lot in my photo shoots and when I travel, I really like this piece. But again, I need to get to that space where I am working karma and I am exchanging things for other things. It's the gypsy way. So I must, I must. I must increase my bust, right? Right. <laughs> anyway, um, so for those of you who have children like myself, or if you know children, um, oftentimes, and Declan, my son, loves to wear necklaces. This is, doesn't have to be something um, that has to be, oh, Debbie says she wants that one. Okay, Debbie. Well, I'm so excited that you're going to get, see, this is what I love about selling it to people that I know and love dearly because Debbie, I'll message you um, the invoice for that. And then that way the spell and everything will go to you. And um, I know that it's going to a good home. Ah! Okay. Um, gosh, I love how it bends too. Okay. Anyway, don't. You got to let it go. <sighs> okay. See this? It's hard for me when it's sentimental. Anyway, moving. Declan really likes this piece. I've noticed that children really gravitate towards this piece. It has these kind of really beautiful, now they're, they're green stones that when I was talking to the woman that was making them, she was like, those are jade. And I was like, I don't think that that's jade. But I wasn't going to sit there and argue with her because I, it's not worth it. Um, so I'm not entirely sure, but these were made. Um, and now up here, it's the Ojibwe Reservation, which is really kind of powerful. And it's a completely different space than what I grew up in, which was more predominantly Ch uh, Cherokee and the Missouri uh, canoe people, which is different than the ice people. It's very different magic, but still the, the three parts. And this is the bear. So in Missouri, we don't really have bears. So I wasn't really terribly connected with bears until I moved to Minnesota, where bears are an issue. We get them like eating our house. 
So to me, they were always kind of mythical. Now they're a real thing and I have to be aware of the bears. So a bear has been very significant for me for Minnesota. It's been very significant for me for that family establishment. And you'll find in the animal totem world, that's what the bear means. So this woman, she um, reached out and she said, I feel the bear for you, which was kind of funny because I had moved just up the way. So this is my bear piece. And this one's only 40 as well. Um, again, I'm really kind of only selling these to pay for the shipping and, and then just a, a little extra for the spell work for the jar. Um, I'm, I'm not thinking that this is jade, but it could be. I think it's probably uh, a green agate, even though you don't see green agates that terribly often. But again, it is not turquoise, but they're not dyed either. You can often tell a dyed stone, guys, um, be careful, you don't want to damage them. But if you get fingernail polish or an acetone on something, or if you leave it, leave it set out in the sun, dye will fade. And so sometimes if I get an amethyst that I'm kind of questionable about, I will leave it in the window. It's so sad to watch the beauty fade, but it will. The dye will fade, the, it will get bleached out, and then you will be left with still a beautiful crystal that is gorgeous, but then you know it's not the crystal that you bought it for. These are not dyed. These are beautiful little beads with little crystal glass beads. And um, it's just your normal kind of medium length chain. Um, but this is really, really beautiful. Uh, Samantha, thank you so much. I'll see you in a second. Um, but this again, this is just my number two and it's bare. And it's a necklace that's coming with a spell jar. All of these are coming with a spell jar. Minnesota hibernating, which I'm good at, says Mary. Yes, the bear is good about consolidating its energy. It's good about being able to delegate its energy, conserve its resources, be able to do whatever it wants. And I always think of um, Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? It's true. Uh, but the bear energy is strong. So I like wearing the bear. I like kind of having its more indigenous roots to knowing that it was handmade. Um, so it is kind of delicate, uh, but very pretty, very simple. Um, but on a completely different spectrum, <clears throat> this is a different type of jewelry. David, it makes me think of you. I think you have your ears pierced, right, David? Um, but these are just a set of really basic earrings, okay? Um, but what's really beautiful about these and I don't wear a lot of earrings. I used to have earrings out the wazoo, um, tragus and the whole nine yards. But what I noticed um, after having children, especially my body started rejecting heavy metals. So anything that I was keeping in my face, even sometimes my lip ring, my lips would swell. I'd look like a, a Jenner uh, or a Kardashian. And, you know, whereas that's probably terribly uh, exciting to some people, to me, it was really scary because your lip ring gets tight and, Anyway, I have to be very careful with the metals that I wear. So keep in mind with all of these pieces, these are all pieces that I've worn and they've not um, disturbed my skin, which is important. And they've also been cleaned, by the way. Uh, so this is a pair of earrings. See how cute these are? Now, I want you to look at the detail. They have that Celtic knotwork and it's... Gosh, I see these a lot. Now, this is a pair of earrings that I got coming from New Orleans. Get out of town. When I think of New Orleans, I'm always thinking of the above ground sarcophagus. I'm always thinking of some of the beautiful French architecture and beignets and the food. And mm, it's just... It's just a powerful space. Anyway, they're um, hand beaten. It's on both sides, so it's not a press. It's kind of cool. They're really, really gorgeous. Little Celtic crosses, just tiny. Again, none of my pieces are very flamboyant. I'm not a very flashy woman, I will say, um, but subtle and spiritual. And the Celtic stuff to me, anytime I wear it, I feel very proud. I feel very stoic. I feel very connected to Mother Earth. I start seeing the green man and all of the trees. I start hearing pan and the wind. I know that sounds really fuzzy. Oh gosh, I hope my husband isn't hearing me, but 
Oh, you are? Shoot. Um, but I do. It's part of that, I think, dress up, right? When you start wearing those pieces, especially if it's not something you wear very often, which I never do. Um, it's a piece that it's just kind of like, you know, <sighs> yeah. Um, it's been here long before me and will be here long after me kind of a kind of a feeling. I also get a, a Monty Python kind of a power from them too, which is kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> so these are Celtic cross earrings and um, these are only 30. $30. It's really just breaking it down to almost like $10 an earring and $10 for shipping because it's going to be a little bit for shipping. And um, so that is, I don't know how much it's going to be very, 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 very minimal because who wants to pay for shipping? Um, so to keep that at $30 for the pair of earrings and a spell jar to go with it. And that is from my personal collection and the only pair of earrings that I have for those of you who are asking. And the only um, bracelet that I have right now because my turquoise pieces, my agate pieces and all of the really cool. Oh, Meta, you want that? Ooh, okay. Yay for your mama. Oh, okay. When I send you the invoice, so I'll ask you about the spell. So be thinking about what you want to go in that spell, what you might want to seal it with, what thoughts you might have for it. And we'll box it up and make sure and gift it nice for her. Ooh, that's cool. And it'll be arriving right around St. Patrick's Day. Ooh, even better. Okay, good, good, good. Very cool, Meta. Thank you. And so this is my piece number four. Now, uh, I shared this with my gypsy tribe. And I all and I took the video down. So if you're if you're one of my Gypsy Tribe members and you're noticing that this is shown back up with hesitancy and you thought maybe I sold it, it's because I changed my mind about selling it. And then I was like, rah, rah, rah. Um, this is a piece I really, really like, but it takes a special woman to wear it or a man or a costume or something that it would fit perfectly for. Um, it's not cumbersome to be honest and it's been so worn that it's actually soft it's not loose so it's not going to dangle if you're someone who types I'm really picky about bracelets it can't be one that is going to dangle on the counter and it also can't be loose enough that I think that I have to be doing this to get it to wear right I want the symbol to be where the symbol should be and it shouldn't adjust so to be able to have that there I want it to stay there and so this is my I call it my black widow, um, but this is some really beautiful stone work. And I've asked a few different people up here because it's beaded up here on the reservation here. So it's a piece, look at this. So it's kind of got these just basic glass beads, but then this, you know, it's not a dream catcher. So before we say that, but it's this, you're wearing it right there on your wrist right where your energy goes through and out to your hands. And so bracelets are really powerful about controlling the energy that flows through to your hands. If you're a writer, a typer, a speaker, like if we're doing this or I'm doing sign language and we're talking about breakfast and what we're going to have and if we're going to do bacon or if we're going to do eggs, or we're going to do sausage, what are we going to eat? And that you have this, this brings your hands in, right? And so I sometimes don't always bring a lot of attention to my hands unless it's to my fingers or to my fingernails because I'm doing tarot card readings. But the wrist is quite powerful. I've noticed people like to hide things on their wrist, especially working in mental health. So I'm always, always, always paying attention to what people wear around this very delicate, sacred part of their body. It's also indicative of being chained or restrained or bonded or in different cultures where you have like the genie of the lamp sense that you are tied down. Some people notice a certain past life aversion, a PTSD or CPTSD aversion to wearing certain tight chokers or restrained things. Um, this is something that actually feels really good when I wear it. It's a cold stone, so it's cool which I have anxiety. So anything that you can press on your hot spots to cool your blood uh, is really nice. And like a dream catcher designed with that agate there um, to kind of cleanse energy coming in. If you're touching people, working with people, uh, being able to have 
protective things on your hands or wrist. <sighs> we see a lot of copper jewelry for that reason on the bracelet area. It's really important. It can kind of help filter the blood. So this is one, this is also only $30 and this is my Black Widow bracelet. It's really cool. I don't think you're ever going to see a piece like this and it's a thinner stone. So it's not really cumbersome or blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, and it is the only bracelet that I have. So this is my, my Black Widow bracelet. It's only $30. Black Widow bracelet. If you should uh, want this or someone you know wants this, just let me know sold in the comments or message me if this is no longer a private video. And um, <clears throat> gosh, dang it, Meta. Okay, good. I say gosh dang it only because I love all of these pieces dearly and that means that I will shed a tear when they leave, but that is only for happiness for you to have it. Um, it is funky, isn't it? It's funky. And when I box this, this is going to come with a really cool spell depending on what you want to use it for. You know, maybe you're a music person and you're going to be playing. People are going to be looking at your hands. You want it to be powerful. So the spell that it'll be uh, worked with will be that way. Mm. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so let me put that to the side. And now this is where you're going to hear my heart go pitter-patter, pitter-patter, because these are the pieces I'm going to move through really, really quickly. Mostly because I love these pieces. So as I go through them, um, you guys will let me know. <laughs> Sold. And if not, cool. <clears throat> Either way, these are from my private collection. And these are all pieces that I think that you're going to enjoy. And so here we go. Without further ado, I can do this. We can do this. So this is a piece that I really love. And I'm, I call it my Gypsy Star. And it is a crystal piece. Not a real crystal, not a quartz crystal, but a glass crystal. Meaning this is something that sometimes you're going to see people in the 70s dangling from their Cadillac mirror and making stars everywhere and rainbow bursts on the floor or on the ceiling. Something that grandma would dangle in her kitchen window. It makes me think of that space where you're washing dishes after a family meal. And it's very <sighs> indicative of safety. <clears throat> I don't know if you've had that pleasure. I had that at my grandma's house. That's where this piece takes me. And I don't wear a lot of gold jewelry or gold pieces so i don't believe this is real gold again these are all like antique pieces so it's not so important to me if it's real or not as much as the story i don't believe it's real gold <clears throat> it's not priced as such it's priced more because this is also a secondary uses as a pendulum you can see it's already kind of glowing oh my gosh it's so beautiful okay um, and this is my gypsy star because wherever you dangle this, it's going to make rainbows. And wherever you put this, it's going to be um, really simple and beautiful. And I have found it works really beautiful. I sometimes wear this and couple it with like my Egyptian eye and my eye of Horus and my Ankh. Sometimes I put it with my moon jewelry because it's a star. And look, it's not a 2D star. It's a big old fat chunky 3d all the way around kind of gorgeous guy and um it's just really powerful so this one is 50 it comes with a spell and it is a medium necklace and i adore this piece again it's only 50 dollars, and it is my gypsy star necklace hallelujah and you can sec uh, second it as a pendulum sometimes when i I'm at a party or a group somewhere and someone's like, there's a witch, she does readings. And I'm like, what? You have a piece like this that you can dangle and also use on a paranormal investigation if you've run out of tools. I just like to be resourceful. I, I guess it's kind of that uh, the gypsy in me, but we like to have everything be efficient and beautiful. This is probably the most flashy piece that I have. So when I see it, I'm like a raven. I'm like, look at the sparkles. It's so beautiful. Anyway, um, so there's that piece. I might wear that one tomorrow. <laughs> if I don't sell it tonight, I'll wear it tomorrow. <clears throat> this, this piece is only 25, guys, because I think that this is something that is probably more of a generic thing. This is not a handmade piece that I know of. I don't believe it is. It's something that I think somebody probably got at 
a Sears 15 years ago for $29.99 or something. I don't know. Anyway, the story of how this came to me is really cool. Um, and I won't bore you with the story uh, if you're not called to the necklace. But if this necklace calls to you, um, this is kind of a nostalgia piece. And it has a few little pieces of agate and it has a little jasper on it. And it's very, very simple. And it's just a beaten necklace that says beloved on it. Um, this came from more from the piece of if you have read that book, if that word speaks to you, if the linguistics speaks to you. Um, this is kind of a shorter necklace as well. Uh, I really love beaten metal. I love words as someone who works in neurolinguistic programming. If you are a part of the gypsy tribe and you do spell work with me, words are everything. <clears throat> and I have a really funny story that comes with Beloved. So when I wear this piece, it's very nostalgic for me. It takes me to a very specific place. It's got a very powerful way to time travel, I will say. Um, but it is a kind of Southern Oprah if you're a fan of her, uh, vibe, if you're into that. Um, very interesting kind of necklace. So that is my $25 beloved Southern Oprah piece. Okay. I don't know. I wrote down 25. I don't know if I said 20 or 25 or 30, but I wrote down 25. So that's what it will be. And if you want it, you let me know it's sold and then I'll sell it to you. Okay. This is a piece that if you know someone who's born in May, which I do, someone that I love very, very much, my husband is born in May. So this is a very romantic piece in that, but it's a little too feminine to remind me of my husband when I wear it. And because I don't wear a lot of gold, and also this is a little bit longer, which is actually what I like. I like my necklaces a little bit longer, but lately I have noticed because I've been doing podcasts and the request has been that my necklaces either be short or so long that they're not distracting. They can't be right here where it's being cut off and people wonder what the hell it is that it's distracting to my neckline. So if you're someone who works on Zoom or you have to do professional headshots, um, this length, I'm finding I wear it less unless I'm going out. And then it's my preference because I find it to be casually beautiful. But it's for that reason that I'm parting with it. But I call it my May piece. And I'll show you why. Um, this came to me in an old antique sale a way back. And it's got this lily of the valley pressed into it with May right there. And the, I know, right? Linda says it's gorgeous. I know. And yes, it's got this green growth on it and it needs to be scrubbed and shined. And I'm sure it just shines beautifully when it's cleaned. Now, am I going to clean that off of there? I'm not because I've left it on there on purpose because the accent stones are this beautiful green. And so the colors against it, I don't know. I've just always loved oxidized metals and like nickel as it changes and warps and copper as it ages. And this is not ugly to me. It's like a cemetery stone that hasn't been scrubbed of the moss. I love it. It gives it an extra character and it's just beautiful. It's a really beautiful piece. It kind of reminds me of a rosary because of the stones and the way that they're separated on the chain and the chain is gold to match it. So this is 40 and it is my May piece. It's number seven. So number seven, May piece. It's $40. It's a necklace. And again, these all come with a spell jar. So depending on what it is you're purchasing this for. And I also like it because I like to collect things with flowers. I think the herb, the green witch in me, anything that I can press flowers into or have and go send, you know, Lily of the Valley with this. Like, I feel like I want to go get wallpaper or a card or it just inspires me to want to go to this certain time period. I really love it. 
but I just don't wear it as much as I feel like I should. And there's this voice screaming at me that just says, wear me like a, a beautiful chain that I am. And I feel like it needs to go on a woman that looks like Dakota Fanning or something, or like someone with some, so I don't know what I think. I think I just feel like it needs, there's someone that I know that it's calling to, and I don't know who it is. Is it you? It might be. It might be. But here we are. We're barreling through these and we're almost done. There's only a handful left, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more. So I'll go really quick. Okay. Really quick without giving too much energy. This is just a really basic uh, cloth uh, knot because this was something I got at the ocean whenever I was visiting the ocean a ways back. But this is a cool wired piece when you sit there and you watch somebody uh, do the stonework that they pluck off of the beach and press into a turtle and then do the wire work and you have it. Um, this piece is only $20, but the reason that I kept it is because I love the turtle and anybody who likes turtles, if you like stones that are turtles, stones that are turtles, um, this is like one of those, it's not real ivory, but it's one of those like mock ivory looking stones. It's just kind of a white, looks like a white granite. Not sure, but the, the, to me, watching this person work with their hands, it's a whole story. Anyway, it's a lot of skilled handwork and it's just absolutely beautiful when we were talking about the wires and the way that it moves over the stone. And this piece is only $20 and it's really just for the turtle animal totem power that it comes with. I love turtles. They're very sacred. For the nomadic gypsy and me, they represent being able to take your home anywhere you go. Love it. Um, right? I love turtles. Tina says, good, I like the turtle. He's really simple and beautiful. And I've been looking for the right chain to put him on. And I've been looking for years. So I don't wear him as much as I should. But he's always spoken to me. And now I kind of feel like, okay, if I'm going through and purging jewelry for people to find the right altar piece for them as they're embarking on their new spaces because everyone's reinventing themselves, this is how it's going to happen. So maybe the turtles for you. <clears throat> now, this necklace, uh, again, people often are surprised that a witch, what, has Christian or spiritual jewelry that has crosses? It's true. I might have a rosary collection to rival most. And I love spiritual jewelry. It's what I collect. It's what I love. I think a lot of witches collect it. So if you have a witch in your life or you yourself, are drawn to pieces, you'll see why. So one, I think the feminine space of the choker, chokers for me have to be very dainty. Either they're gonna be gaudy and Victorian or they're gonna be very, very, very subtle. And so something that's got a really soft chain, so soft that it's almost, you know, like it's just silk in your fingers and it doesn't get caught or bend or any way and it's very soft because I have, so I have these trap muscles from when I used to box and do cheerleading that I can't get rid of. They're, well, I can't say not get rid of, but they're big. So if I'm wearing something, I usually am very self-conscious that this looks really masculine. I'm not going to lie. So if I'm wearing something that is going to bring attention to my neck area and my neck area is showing, I really like it to be dainty and beautiful. And this is one of those pieces that I've been hanging on to it to wear for the perfect occasion, which I've not had, or to actually give to one of my nieces who I know is terribly religious but then I've seen them kind of wane away from their religion. And um, in that case, I want it because it's a cross choker and it's very subtle and it's just that sterling silver. It's not shiny. It's really simple. Oh, I just love it. See, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, don't sell it. Make it super fucking expensive so no one buys it. Um, no, I don't. Um, God, uh, this one's $50. So, uh, again, you can see how I'm pricing things based on how absolutely important to me. To be honest, this is kind of priceless. I really like this. Uh, but I've not seen a cross choker like this, subtle and dainty and beautiful. You know, usually crosses are always hanging a certain way. If you hang them in a slightly different way, especially in a witch environment, it goes into a really weird space. This is ever so slightly slant while still being beautiful. 
I like to lay it right on the collarbone. Oh, it's so beautiful. Anyway, okay. Um, this is like a really Christian. This is like the Virgin Mary, St. Thecla, um, Mary Magdalene, major feminine biblical women, Sarah, even. Like powerful women of the Bible, Jezebel, uh, all of them. Bring them out. This is just kind of one of those pieces. Uh, I know a lot of people might think Jesus Christ when they think of the cross. But when I think of it in a juxtaposition of a feminine choker like this, it has a little bit different feel to it. So there's that piece. That one is $50. It is number nine. And it is my cross choker. If you're interested, let them know. In a completely different space, if you are interested in more of a manly man or more of a, a manly manny man man, um, there's two reasons that I love this. Well, three reasons. Um, this piece is another $50 chain. And you'll find that this one, I, I have a completely different energy around this one. And this is, this is a really blunt piece. It's an androgynous piece, meaning that you know, you could be a man or a woman. You could be whatever you want. It's not going to matter. You could wear whatever you want anyway. But this is one of those pieces that's when I wear it, it's it's a lot heavier. And it's a lot, uh, men love this piece. They will grab it. Be careful when you wear this because people will want to touch it. And it hangs kind of low. Uh, it hangs right at boob level. And it's really, really, really beautiful. Now, it's a cross, but not a, just a normal cross. Um, I like it because it has an infinity chain, so you don't have to worry about latching and unlatching that perfect length. But then it's one of these. I know these aren't the most popular. That's why I collect them. It's kind of the, the faceless, ugly Jesus. He looks like an alien. So the alien Jesus with the idol uh, ring around for like that renaissance, that idol period. It's an art nod to an art period that I really love. And when I think about the cross, when I think about the implications of guilt, when I think about how religion works, I love for this heavy, like heavy, durable, freaky, alien, man guilt Christ cross it's like it's what I expect Ragnar Lothbrok to have been wearing when he picked out a cross when he converted to Christianity for a brief moment <laughs> something uh in your face that's going to punch you and make you think and make you question but it's still very in your face Christian like I I really have found if you guys know me, I, I walk a line. I, I have loved living in a very feminine, beautiful uh, Lutheran community where sometimes my rough edges are not received gracefully uh, as they were in the city, often ignored. Uh, and this piece gets a lot of interesting energy. People don't know how to receive it, which... I just find to be really powerful. <laughs> I think that that's super cool. So when I wear this, uh, I wear this to like crypticons. I wear this to my convergences. I wear this to the places where I know that some people think they are God's gift to the earth. And some people are looking to be God's gift to the earth. And there's both lost and lost. And this is just such a powerful piece of everything that I love about Christianity in a necklace that Christ is counting on you. But seriously, that's just powerful. So, and I like an infinity chain because oftentimes because I have kids and pets and things and I'm just cumbersome, I break chains a lot. So if it can be an infinity chain that doesn't have a latch and it doesn't have a weak point, um, to me, I kind of like that too on a religious piece. I think that it's symbolic. So all of my pieces are going to have some kind of a story like that or be symbolic. Um, now, this is a new piece. Uh, again, if you're interested in any of these pieces, guys, they're going to be going up on my website next week for sale. So you have a little time to think about it. If you want it right now, you don't want to wait. Just let me know right now in the chat and just say sold. Let me know like sold. Number 10, that $50 man's guilt necklace. I need it. It's Nordic and it's powerful and I got to have it. You just let me know and then I will not post it online and I will not uh, let anyone pick it up or snatch it from you. 
Now, I am a photographer, so I like to work with people. I like to capture their souls, right? <laughs> I also like to do forensic psychology research. I love to profile people. I love to do psychic readings and get into people's minds. It's a, a fascination of mine. I think they all meld together quite well. But in photography, what I have learned is sometimes it's the pieces that will completely change a photo. Sometimes I'm looking for spiritual decor or a piece of jewelry for uh, a crown set or a mask set or a photo shoot that's going to be very spiritual. And it's going to be completely centered around that that you find. This was one of those pieces. I saw it. It's not terribly like, whoa, again, it's not flamboyant. It's not sparkly. It's not going to sparkle. It's not shimmery, shim, sham, sharu. But this is a handmade piece. Um, it's really cool little silk flowers made by hand and glued onto and sewn through these glass rosary beads. And it's repurposed into a wedding piece. So it's a three tiered. Again, you guys know how I feel about mind, body, spirit and anything three tiered. But it's a three tiered piece. And they're really simple rosary beads like you'll recognize that that clear kind of opaque iridescent they're very very pretty they're very simple and the lace flowers they go through on the back of a beading like that so when they turn over they're not like glue or ugly it's still gold and then these beautiful lace things now I love this because I had never seen anything really like it and then I'm thinking boudoir I'm thinking honeymoon. I'm thinking these beautiful uh, Aphrodite. I'm thinking spiritual goddess. I'm thinking the white energy and how it drapes just over the cleavage area. It's really beautiful, but then plays on that white innocence with the iridescent opaque, but not completely see-through beads. It's sexy without being overtly slutty. And it's also an off beaten color metal it's not gold it's like a old gold i love it and i feel like any woman or anyone who puts this on it's going to to become a persona and if someone doesn't buy it from under me it's going to be me and for the sake of the world we don't want that <laughs> And I just, I love this piece and I want to be doing a photo shoot with it. And I will be doing a photo shoot with it if it doesn't get snatched up here in the next two weeks uh, for sure. So it's one of these, this is just a $40 piece. It's probably worth a lot more than $40 as a repurposed rosary. But I'm going to say that because I feel like this needs to go to a woman who needs to feel beautiful and empowered and sexy. Maybe just in a photo she takes of herself in the bathroom that no one ever sees. And it is uh, Aphrodite. If she's one of your patron people, this is very Greek metal lace, old alchemy, female dainty, and I really don't think you should be wearing anything but this. <laughs> like when I see this necklace, every time I look at it, I'm like, I can't wear a shirt with that. And obviously I have to wear a shirt today. <laughs> but the goddess in this necklace is like, what happens if you don't? Bet you'll make more money. I bet people will smile more. What'd be wrong? You'd go to jail, Sarah. You'd embarrass yourself and others. Don't do that. But this necklace says do it it says put me on take everything else off and for forty dollars change the world and that's why someone please buy this from me <laughs> please because it's gorgeous and it's a repurposed rosary shouldn't someone wear it naked isn't that what you do with those? Oh, it's just so beautiful. Anyway, okay. Um, maybe if you know someone getting married, it could be one of those, right? Uh, it's such a beautiful piece, right? Kira, Mary, everyone kind of commenting on it. Uh, Brianne, uh, they're beautiful. They're, and it's just, it's one of those pieces that I'm like, oh, okay. 
if someone buys it, it'll be perfect. And if not, wow, okay, I know what I'm wearing to my funeral. Uh, it's that. Anyway, okay, this is um, just a really simple, this one's just $20, guys. So if you're just looking to pick up a really simple stone piece, this is a Lake Superior agate. It's non-dyed. I actually am drawn to agates that are earth tones. So whereas in our crystal sales, which we're going to have here in a few weeks, uh, probably not even that long, I'd say maybe a week, week and a half, uh, closer to St. Patrick's when people get their stimulus is what people were requesting. Uh, but like, so this agate, very bright, Madagascar, it's super bold, super orange, and it's on fire, not for sale. This is my agate that I'm showing you as it's heated. If you have something that's not heated, something that's just been plucked from the earth, probably from a cold, barren space like Lake Superior, you're going to have an agate that looks more like this, that has a honey to it. It has a brown, like a lacquered wood. And then the crystal geode part of it. It, I mean, I love when the white is white and the crystal is crystal and it's not smeared. I love it when the lines, you can almost like dendrology count and see the history, you know? Anyway, this is a really beautiful piece. But what I like about it is it's got just these really soft hemp, uh, the hemp wire. It's not wire. What is this, guys? It's not flexible or stretchy, but it's it's that really durable hemp cording. But anyway, it's brown. It's a really soft brown and a Lake Superior honey agate. It's absolutely beautiful and it's not heated in any way. So you can see it's just got its really simple earth tone and it's an agate choker. And again, all of these come with a spell jar that once you purchase your piece and you let me know who and what it's for, it will come with a little spell jar just like this and you will get it in the mail. So this one's only $20. This is my one little honey agate. Why am I selling it? <laughs> says Dory says, why are you selling it? Um, just rope says Brienne, jute rope, jute rope, jute rope. See, there we go. Now I know you're, I'm learning and you're learning. We're learning jute rope. I actually really like this because you can get it wet. You can wear it in the shower and go, oh shit. Oh, okay. I'm fine. Uh, you can have that and it's not going to stretch or shrink or dilapidate on you. Like some things you get in the shower and you dissolve like a damn witch. I'm melting. Um, you don't want to have you or your witch garb melt. And so I really like this because it's been with me for a while. And I don't know. I love agates. Uh, Native Americans where I grew up, they said that if you hold an agate to your third eye, you would look for the portal to your past lives. And that each agate on earth is just for you, that we all have an agate somewhere like a soulmate out there. This one's not mine. I feel Mother Earth and I love it. That's beautiful, but it does not take me to my past lives. So this one's just $20. If you or someone you know would like a beautiful agate, jute rope necklace, you let me know. And guys, I'm down to my last two necklaces, three necklaces. Okay, the last three. And then I'm going to post this and keep it up for just a week. Then when I launch my website with my new inventory, whatever has not been sold, this video will go down and that will go up. So you'll have a little time to think about it after tonight. Or if you feel like it's calling to you, just tell me sold in the chat room. Um, this is a piece. This is a spell jar. It's a teeny tiny spell jar. If you like teeny tiny things, little miniature things. This is lucky number 13 and it is just my spell jar necklace. And this is, uh, I knew it at one point. Again, if I had my wonderful Kenna here, she would know, but it's like carbonized pseudoxide. It's not a beautiful name, but it is a heated kind of, not a man-made stone, but kind of. And it's this really cool, almost like a lava granite stone that, what, carbon pseudomoxide? Some, if you, I've got it on my phone downstairs where I have my spell jar written, but I don't have it written down because this isn't something that like, anyway, it's a choker. It's a short necklace. But what's really cool about it is it's got little pieces of the fool's gold and a little bit of pyrite. And then it's got a scroll 
looped off, tied off in there, and then corked and sealed. And this is just a really simple, really beautiful spell necklace that, I mean, straight up, people are going to ask you. Now, of course, you guys, when I bought this, I think of Sting. And, you know, I find myself singing that and I'm dancing around. I'm singing and some old man uh, starts singing with me and I start dancing around and ends up being that this rather stuck up kind of space by the end of my song. We're all dancing. We're having like our own flash mob generations, different colors, all sorts of people brought together by the power of Sting. I felt like Phoebe. I felt like Phoebe from Friends and this kind of like apothecary. There might be a hundred thousand of these, but I don't believe that there are uh, necklaces that this came to me in that moment at this old antique store uh, up in the North Shore area. And I really love this piece. And so like Mary says, this one is really, really neat. This one is only $50. My little spell jar. And it's got a little stone with it, I know, and it's in itself a spell jar, but you will also get an additional spell jar to keep on your altar or have to go with it as a gift. And this one's just super cool, having that little extra stone on it. It's one that anytime I wear it, people always ask me about it. They always ask me what's written on it. And truth be told, I have no idea. I don't know anything about what is written on that bottle in there, but there is something written on it. And I have wanted to tear it apart and look numerous times. But that's why I have often told myself, much like Sting, what would Sting do? And I don't think Sting would open it. Sting seems like the kind of guy that would be like Kung Fu Panda and that there's nothing written on it and that that's the secret ingredient of the noodle. Um, I feel like it's very philosophical. It's very empirical that I will know until I've not seen and I will see until I not know. <laughs> it's just... I don't know. I like the vibes that this necklace gives me. It doesn't necessarily give me ocean vibes as much as it gives me uh, molten lava, magma, new earth, creating what you want, creative music, energy, Phoebe vibes. Uh, I really love it. I'm not a colorful person. I don't wear a lot of color. So the the carbosudirudionite is kind of a lot for me. So I find I don't wear it as often as I should. And then my last two pieces, these are pretty sentimental to me. I mean, they all are, but these last two pieces are pretty exceptional. You've seen me wear these a lot in my photo shoots. Um, they're not pieces that I would say I've grown out of, but they're pieces that I'm ready to see what comes next when I release this one. Because right now I am doing a lot of training. Um, every year, about this time of year, I do work on the Sephirot. I do work on the Tree of Life. I do work on connecting to seeds and grounding and gardening. And the Buddhist way, the middle way, the noble way, the five-pulled path, the seven-pulled path, the nine-pulled path, like all of these different um, prayer spaces. Uh, I love uh, the Buddhist, Hindu, Indian cultures that you start going back in through time and seeing the same stories being told in different ways. Um, now, this is a necklace that is usually, it's an incense necklace. It's a temple necklace that you wear. It has your two prayer beads on the top. And then, um, and the prayers are, um, I once knew them, but they are two little, um, two little deity coins. <clears throat> and then you have this, which usually would open. And then in the bottom, there is a hole. So you would be able to open this and put incense on the inside and close it. And then it would be an incense diffuser or dangler for you to have on your necklace. This one, someone, uh, it's very sad, which is how I came into it because it looks like it might be like an old polished stone. It's got some really cool, I mean, the work on it is just exceptional. And it's like it was a locket and the person's like, oh yeah, that you know is worth probably a few hundred dollars before somebody broke it. And I was like, well, how'd they break it? Oh, see the hinge on the bottom? It's supposed to open and they've glued it shut. They've like super glued it shut. I bought it full intentions thinking I was going to be able to deconstruct it, tear it apart, see what was on the inside and make it happen. 
But then I shared this with my husband and he is my Mr. Fix it. And when I couldn't do it and then he couldn't do it, I realized that this is why that person got rid of their mother's very expensive prayer beads that she got when she was traveling overseas because it wasn't functional and therefore she couldn't sell it to like an antique dealer. So it was the only antique necklace that she couldn't sell. I love the underdog. I go for that every time. I love the prayer beads. I love the deity beads. I love the culture. I love that it was once used as an incense and has something inside of it and that I may never know or get it to open completely. You can wear it. It's a three tier. Again, you're seeing my series of the tiers, right? It's a really beautiful belly dancing piece. Uh, this is predominantly where I wore it when I was doing Indian dancing and learning about uh, finger work and dancing Bali. And this necklace came to me in that space in my life. I really love this piece. This piece is $80. Uh, only because I have no idea it might be worth thousands. It's an old prayer necklace uh, and I adore it. But I'm also interested that I know in a meditation recently, I was told that if I was to relinquish my material items, that I would come into more prosperity. And because it came to me in this particular frequency, it's almost like a psychological test to see what will come in this space. So this is number 14. This is my Buddha uh, piece. I really love it. Um, and I also kind of like the aging colors on it too. And then the last piece is my Egyptian queen. Egyptian queen. And this one is only $40. So um, there, that one is neat. I know. I like that adjective tonight. That one's neat. <laughs> Hopefully you guys realize when you see a little bit of my own private collection with my jewelry and my altar pieces, they're all types of stuff that call to me spiritually and have a story. That's really what I love about it. And as my husband will often tell you, anywhere I go, people talk to me, they come up to me, they say the weirdest things to me. And sometimes I feel like it's the jewelry that I'm wearing or something that has drawn them to me. And I've actually learned over the years that some of my pieces indeed fish people out of the ether. This is uh, an Egyptian, I call it my Egyptian princess, but it's a WBHM. It's a golden piece, so it's got its little maker's mark on it. I have not looked that up, uh, but I call it my Egyptian princess because this was a piece, very rich woman going through like, oh, you need to have this. This is going to make your outfit. Uh, what? And it kind of came to me. And I'll, again, I don't wear a lot of flashy jewelry. So when I'm wearing something like this, this choker is one that I'm wearing when I'm wearing my Egyptian pieces. This is what I'm wearing because it sets off of the collarbones and dangles in such a way that it's just very powerful. It's a really powerful piece. This is like my um, Ishtar African queen. Uh, just goddess necklace and it's kind of heavy and it's jointed into three parts mind body and spirit and the jointments in itself are uh, earth water air and fire and i just think sometimes you have to have a cool piece when you're wearing like an all black dress or like sometimes i'll wear a business suit and if back when I would go to walk to court or something and you just need a powerful necklace, you know, you're walking into something where you want to have the upper hand. This is one of those pieces that does it. So this is $40. It's my Egyptian golden choker. It will come with a spell jar like all of these will. And you guys, if you or someone you know would like one of these pieces as a gift uh, for yourself or just because, uh, let me know. And don't forget, uh, as I shared in the beginning, if you guys are looking to update your altar with any specific pieces, altar pieces, 
Sometimes I have people um, tell me to go shop for them. They need an incense burner. Sarah, I really need a cauldron. Sarah, I really need a new tarot deck holder. Sarah, I need a new tarot deck. Uh, Sarah, I need a new choker. Sarah, I need a new altar piece, whatever. If there's a specific deity that you're looking for, uh, you know, Medusa, Persephone, uh, Athena, Hades, uh, Baron Samdi, Jesus Christ, doesn't matter. If there are certain pieces that you are looking for, even say, for example, certain religious pieces that you go, oh my goodness, I really, really, really love this. Oh my goodness, this serves, you know, multiple uh, purposes, not just as a candle holder and something to recite for certain rituals, if you're a religious person, but um, just for all sorts of different cool things in the paranormal, different things for divination. Um, I have all sorts of cool things. And you guys, for those of you who were looking forward to enjoying some of the crystals that we have, um, I got back and had picked out, I finally got my crystals from our last crystal sale and some of the pieces that I ascertained. Oh my goodness, the rose quartz pieces that she has on Wondering Further going up and the crystals that she is going to have in the next crystal sale. For those of you asking, I got Elon. Uh, and yes, the security at the airport dropped him on the corner. I'm very sad about it. But you know what? My Elon is here. And if you're wondering why we call him Elon, it's because when the light shines behind this mountain, it goes black and it looks like the mountains of Mars. And whenever the light shines on it, it lights up this little portal of quartz. And it's my little Mars mountain. And it's a honey calcite stone. So um I really do have to say I've got the best crystal dealer on the planet and uh, I know she's busy with a few other things, which is why we are postponing the crystal sale. That's usually on the 11th tonight. Um, but instead, hopefully you guys enjoyed a few of my own special pieces and some of my decorative jewelry and items that you might be interested in to help expand your witch space and your spiritual space. If it's maybe just a basic spell jar or something that you need, let me know. Otherwise, guys, I'm going to send those invoices out to you tomorrow morning. I will box them up and be at the post office tomorrow evening. And for those of you all waiting on stuff, you should have your things here in no time. And uh, I'm married to the postal worker now, so I know the mailman. And I'm, I'm certain now that things are getting done the right way. And I'm excited to be selling more stuff and be more comfortable in my space here as we get things going for 2021. I hope you guys are doing well. Tag someone below that you know that might want something still remaining. And then, like I said, this is going to be up for probably the next week uh, before my website launches. And then hopefully you guys snatch everything up and then my inventory will be completely brand new. Otherwise, let me know if there's something you didn't see. And I will see you tomorrow for morning meditation. Bye-bye, guys.